What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. It's Friday, which means it is Death Stranding Day. Everyone just let me know if you're picking it up or not. Uh, I actually grabbed it last night at midnight. As soon as it went live, I, I started playing it and I will definitely have some thoughts, I'll say that, on uh, uh, during the, the spawn cast coming up Saturday night. So tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern time, stop by. We'll definitely be talking about Death Stranding because there's, uh, there's quite a bit of stuff I would say to go over there. As for today though, we have to talk a bit about the 3DS, which is funny because we figure the 3DS should pretty much be done at this point, but Nintendo is not ready to let it go. And Doug Bowser has even talked a bit more about, I guess their plans going forward for the 3DS somewhat. So we'll talk a bit about that. Shenmue 3 is already going on discount. It's not out yet, but it's going on discount for Black Friday. We're gonna talk a bit about that because that is, uh, Ooh, that's something, all right. And then Sony is seeing a pretty large shakeup behind the scenes in terms of Shuhei Yoshida, where he's going, and someone actually taking his position now. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure to like button, it does help out, and get subscribed so you can stay up to date on all the gaming news going on in the gaming world. We're gonna start today with Mega Man 11. I've already talked about how I'm really, really hoping that the next game Capcom does is Mega Man X9, because it was kind of alluded to that in the X Legacy Collection, but the thing here is, well, I mean, Mega Man 11 has to sell, right? If Mega Man 11 doesn't sell, is there a place anymore for 2D Mega Man games? Well, good news is we don't have to worry about that because it did sell. It's actually reached over 1 million units now, which I think is pretty good considering, I'd say the scope of the game, probably even the budget for it, but Capcom has now officially added it to their Platinum Games list, which means it would have had to have sold at least 1 million units and they add everything. I mean, we're talking, you can go back and look at the original Mega Man X for the Super Nintendo, those sales figures. Basically anything that's sold over a million units is on there. They have like 93 entries. So yeah, they put everything down, but Mega Man 11 is officially on that list, which probably means it was a success. And as we would assume, I'm sure Capcom is working on something else for Mega Man, but what? That is, that is the question. It could be Mega Man 12, but it could also be X9. I'm hoping X9, uh, but good news here is it's Mega Man 11 has sold, so expect some more Mega Man going forward. Oh, and check this out. If you are not aware, uh, Luigi's Mansion is, well, it has some, some lore to it. It has a story, right? Well, apparently that story does include time travel. Now this technically isn't new because it was alluded to before. I believe EGAD even kind of mentioned this and it was definitely talked a bit about by Nintendo on their Twitter account, as you're seeing here, where they talk about how EGAD sent Guiji back in time to the original mansion to practice and become better at capturing ghosts. And then apparently Guiji came back with ghosts uh, when he went back to the future. Yes, it is, it is a weird thing, but technically they have been leaning into it as the remake on the 3DS did have Guiji in there. And that kind of lines up with what's being explained in this tweet and in this, some of this backstory. Now, some of you may have already known this, but if you were someone who picked up Luigi's Mansion on the 3DS, now you're going to Luigi's Mansion 3, yes, there is time travel involved. EGAD apparently has the, uh, the ability to send people back and forth in time. So you can imagine what that's done to the timeline already for this game, but then people have already made timelines for just Mario in general. So I can't imagine time travel is helping any of that out. In fact, I guess it can technically play around with Luigi's Mansion 4 that I'm sure will happen as well down the road. Sure, time travel in Luigi's Mansion, why not? Also, the Pro Controller now has compatibility with Android 10 that's been uh, released. Android Police actually recognized this during an update, saw that pretty much the button set, everything to recognize the Pro Controller as it should be rather than you have to go in, customize, move stuff around. Well, all that's there now. So. It is interesting to see this Android, of course, on your phone or tablet now is compatible with the Pro Controller to the point where you sync it through that top button by the USB-C port, it will find it and then it will sync right up. And that means you can use it for a couple of different things. You could sure use it for an emulator, you could use it for different games, or maybe in the future, Google Stadia? That's possible. They're only gonna launch with uh, uh, some Google Pixel phones at this point. I, I assume it will go further than that though, so that, that's something I guess to think about going forward, but for anyone who also plays a lot of stuff on your phone or your tablet alongside, maybe your Switch that you have a Pro Controller for, there you go, you can sync it up. Or maybe you're someone who plays a lot of games on your tablets and you've been looking for a good controller. Hey, the Switch Pro Controller is pretty good. It has a good battery life, a ton of features built into it, including gyro. So 
maybe something to look at. And guys, some of the quickies out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Doug Bowser talking with The Verge about all things Nintendo. He talked about the 3DS, yes, but he also talked a bit about kind of the retro mini consoles that some of us are collecting at this point. A Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, the Genesis mini came out, the PlayStation system technically came out. Yeah, okay. But, uh, but, a lot of us have been waiting for a Nintendo 64 classic or hoping we've seen some things that might point to it, but Doug Bowser's kind of shot down those rumors once again, at least for now, saying that they're gonna be focusing more on the online service as opposed to working to put out a retro system, I guess, like a Nintendo 64 classic. Although I don't know how much those would affect one another unless they are planning on Nintendo 64 games coming to the online service, I'd be okay with that. I mean, if they want to do that instead and have a full subscription service, like added in with that, I'd be fine with that over a Nintendo 64 Classic existing. But he also talked about the 3DS and it was, it was about what I expected, although it definitely made headlines because it means the 3DS is going to exist and be actively supported, technically supported, not, supported by first party games, but it will be, they'll be produced and shipped out to stores into 2020. This is what Doug Bowser said. We continue to look at the 3DS family, both hardware and games as a strong entry point for some consumers. And we're seeing that as long as consumer demand is there, we'll continue to provide both hardware and software on that front. We're certainly not going to say it today. I think time will tell. We will continue to support 3DS this holiday and into 2020. You know what? There might be a chance that the 3DS does end up being a 10 year system. That would of course be uh, February 2021, it would become a 10 year system. There's also a chance it might come up a little bit short. And I don't even know if Nintendo is necessarily just going to announce that they are discontinuing the 3DS like loudly. They might just slow down shipments to a crawl and then just like seriously, just quietly stop shipping them out. I don't know if they'll have to make a big announcement, maybe a little press release that gets sent out. Uh, maybe they talk about an investor's briefing if they're pressed, but I think the 3DS will continue to exist because it's cheap. 80 bucks. You can get a 2DS system for with like what it comes with Mario Kart now even for like 70 or 80 bucks. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good deal. And I I've said this before, until the Switch is that cheap or close to it anyway, there's no point in getting rid of the 3DS or the 2DS because it's it's free money for Nintendo. It's not okay, it's not completely free money, but the cost to produce those things has got to be very very low at this point, you know, like what 9 years later just about, it's gonna be at the beginning of 2020. Yeah, I don't think those cost a lot. And uh, well, if you go on the holiday, that's gonna be there for people who don't wanna buy maybe their five-year-old or six-year-old a Switch yet, but the 2DS is 80 bucks. That's a good thing to get them started on. Comes with Mario Kart. So I at least get that. And then it also makes me wonder for the future for Nintendo, if while the Switch might not always be their main system in the future, right? Like the Switch might have a six to seven year lifespan. Let's just say that. After that, or even during that transition period, the Switch could continue to exist even into the next generation system for a while if it is cheap enough. That That's completely possible. And honestly, with the strategy here with the 3DS and the 2DS, I don't see why not. I think they're also gonna need a few more revisions of the Switch to get it cheaper, and that probably will come in time. But yeah, it's, uh doesn't surprise me that the 3DS isn't gone yet. Just don't expect any new games because they're, they're just gonna sell it with the current library they have at this point. Next up, let's talk about Shenmue 3. It's out on the 19th of November, so uh, in about 10 days. And then 10 days after that, it is going to be on sale for Black Friday. And I I couldn't believe this one. All right, like look, Need for Speed Heat is also gonna be on sale, but technically they'll have been out for like, what, 10 days longer or something. But it's Need for Speed Heat. Eh, I don't think a lot of people are, are, are going crazy over that one. A lot of people didn't even know the game came out, right? Everyone's looking at Shenmue 3, especially people who have put in money for the Kickstarter. And of course, there has been a lot of talk about the Epic Game Store stuff. It's definitely been in the news quite a bit. Well, if you go to Best Buy, you'll be able to get it for $35 on the 29th or so. What is That's Black Friday, right? Like the day after Thanksgiving. Although it's like on Thanksgiving now, so maybe it's like the day. Of the... Anyway, around that time, Black Friday, you'll be able to pick up, as you're seeing here, Shenmue 3 for $35. They put this advert out and marked down from 60 bucks, of course, on the PlayStation 4, and I was I was floored, all right? So, so if you're somebody who put in money for the Kickstarter, this probably frustrates you a bit considering people will maybe wait 10 days and then, oh look, it's $35. Bit of an impulse buy there, maybe there for a TV and you look over and, oh, I wanted Shenmue 3, I'll just, I'll get it for 35 instead of 60. Yeah, it would kind of frustrate me. Now you have to also look at this and wonder, is this best buy doing the discount or is there some kind of kickback? Because I have done retail and ordering where 
Different companies will give you rebates or it's up to us to do it. Why would Best Buy though discount this game when it just came out? That like to me, that doesn't make any sense. And I do think there might be some stuff on the back end. I mean, consider this, they took that Epic Games deal. Maybe they just have some extra money to play with and they want to get it out there. I don't know. It's, it's an odd, odd thing to see. I don't get it personally. But hey, Shenmue 3 for 35 bucks, if you wanted to pick it up and you didn't want to spend full price on it, just wait about 10 days. Next up, let's talk about a shakeup at Sony. And this makes sense to do this now. I've said this before when we had shakeup with Jim Ryan and Sean Layden just exiting, which by the way, that hasn't really still been touched on by Sony that I've seen. So I, I guess that really was just a very strange exit that probably wasn't even really planned that much. Anyway, that we're having a shakeup here. Gameindustry.biz put out a full article talking about this, and uh, yeah, this is this is an interesting one. I think it's good in the long term for their strategy, but this does see uh, Shuhei Yoshida actually moving around a bit, and they're appointing someone new to take his place. So what's going to happen here is Shuhei Yoshida is going to step down from the head of Worldwide Studios for Sony for PlayStation, and he's actually going to have his own pretty much initiative that's going to work to pull in more indies and just in general indie game studio relationships that I think makes a lot of sense for Sony, right? Uh, and then Guerrilla Games, Herman Hulst, who's pretty much the manager, the person in charge of all that, is going to step up and take his place. And this makes sense, I think, for the person they chose. I think there's a lot of people who heard Herman Hulst, who's that? Well, he's been in charge of Guerrilla Games for a while. He's been with Guerrilla Games for a long time, before they were Guerrilla Games. Like, we're talking like back in 2001 when companies were merging and all. And eventually, Sony, of course, bought Guerrilla in 2005. And since then, they've been developing a couple of games. But the biggest thing, outside of, say, Killzone, Shadowfall, just as an example, or Horizon Zero Dawn, is them creating Decima the game engine that we're seeing used now for a couple of different things, including Death Stranding that came out today, right? This is Sony's engine that Gorilla has been developing. Specifically, they used it for Killzone originally, but they have definitely made it flexible, very flexible. I mean, it was used with Until Dawn. I just talked about Death Stranding, Horizon Zero Dawn, probably gonna be used for the next Horizon Zero Dawn that I'm sure is already in development and probably will be a PlayStation 5, uh, a PlayStation 5 launch game, we, we assume anyway. But if you're someone who was in charge of Gorilla, created Horizon Zero Dawn, and also work to create an engine that Sony will make, will save a lot of money from, because then they don't have to pay uh, Epic to use Unreal Engine, for example, that will uh, be big time for them, big time. So it makes sense why they were looking around for someone who had very, very good management skills. And it appears that Herman Holst has actually proven that he has very good management skills, creating Decima and Horizon Zero Dawn. So take him, move him up, get some new people in going into the PlayStation 5. I think this makes a lot of sense for that. And Shuhei, I think, is going to fill a very important role talking with indie developers because if you look at uh, just the PlayStation 4 in general, it, it did fantastic, but it did slump a bit with the indie games and we saw the Switch pick that up, right? That's like become the indie machine at this point. But if PlayStation can start actually talking and supporting indies, they could probably bring them back as well going into the next generation, which of course will just help indie developers anyway. So overall, this restructuring that's been going on, even kind of, uh, we even had Jim Ryan talk about how they were trying to streamline their globalization process and everything where you just talk to one place rather than three different branches. All of this is kind of working to help launch the PlayStation 5, I think, much smoother. So, hey, we'll see how this all goes down. And I assume at the start of next year, we're going to find out what this PlayStation 5 is and their strategy going forward. And in our last bit of news, let's talk a bit about uh, Masahiro Sakurai, who had an interview, talked a bit about Smash Bros. And I gotta say, Sakurai wasn't messing around. He wasn't very happy, it seems, about Sarah. And do you remember how we had that uh, bit of a translation that they did during the, where he showed off Terry during that live stream? He said that Smash is for good boys and girls, right? And I did think that was a weird statement. I think a lot of people did, but it turns out that was more or less just them messing around with the translation to English. And, and they still said kind of something like that, but then they also threw Sarah in there as a reason. Well, I do think that was a tongue-in-cheek kind of shot at Saro a bit, especially after seeing this interview with Sakurai. One of the first things they say in overseas ratings reviews is no guns. That I can understand, but in Japan, they immediately ask, could you show us all the female characters upside down? Sakurai goes on to say, precisely, Smash Bros. for Wii U almost didn't make its scheduled release date because of ratings issues. We had to revise Politana and Wonderpink's models over and over again. We had Politana wearing shorts and made the inside of Wonderpink's 
uh, skirt too dark to see anything. Nevertheless, Sarah told us the designs were uh, sexually provocative and they were being ridiculous and frankly, quite juvenile. And then Sakurai goes on to just drop some truth on them saying, underwear is just a piece of fabric. If you're more worried about something trivial, like whether you can see some cloth, then whether a game includes firearms, you clearly ought to get your priorities in order. Well, it's, it seems like uh, Sakurai is not very happy with some of the ratings boards and he did drop Saro out there. Just like I said, yeah, it's Saro. It's, that's why we can't have Mai. I, I don't get it either. Okay, these people have guns and you know, Mai of course is in more of a skimpy outfit, but like they're, they're carrying firearms, right? That's this is what you're concerned about. Yeah, that, I thought that was pretty funny to see that. And you can see the frustration here. You can just read it. Like you can feel it through the, the what, what's being written here with Sakurai, who is probably spending quite a bit of time working on these character models. I mean, the detail for some of these characters is insane. You can see Terry just as one. And of course, Sakurai really, really likes the Neo Geo Fatal Fury series. So it makes sense why he would spend so much time with it. But if he does all of this work and then the ratings board comes back and says, hey, uh, can you change this, this, and this? So you can get that E10 rating. Yeah, that's frustrating, especially if it's not even that big of a deal. It's just like he says, it's just fabric. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This one is from Jackie G saying, don't get me excited for XO19 with Scarlet. I want info, even just the name would satisfy at this point. So I think the name reveal will come next year as we'd expect, but man, the PlayStation 5 keeps putting out information and Microsoft keeps trailing. I mean, we technically know the name now, it's PlayStation 5. They put that out there, uh, Sony did with Wired. But Microsoft really plays catch up constantly. They keep saying, yeah, we have that too. Yeah, we have that too. The SSD, yep, that's in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ray tracing, yeah, yep, we have that. It, they keep catching up. It's. I think at some point you gotta set the tone here. Maybe they actually show something with Scarlet XO19, right? That's their big celebration event at the end of the year. And they shouldn't really have an XO19 before Scarlet launches, we assume. So this is a good time to do it. But last year XO19 disappointed me. So I'm not gonna get my hopes up, but it, it only makes sense to do that at XO19, probably about a year before Scarlet launches anyway. Put something out there. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button, really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's the 3DS living on into 2020. How long, okay, let me ask you, how long will, will Nintendo keep this thing going <laughs> with, with the 3DS? I'm very curious what your thoughts are on how far they can take this thing. Also, what about Sony's shakeup with Shuhei moving around? And we have Herman Holst coming up and taking over. And then what about Shenmue 3 getting a discount already 10 days after launch for Black Friday. You guys have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.